Hello viewers and welcome to Nerdology channel. I'm Anas Muhammad and today I got a phone review for you of the LG G Pro. This is a phablet made by LG and it's one of the first successful tries of LG for making a phablet. Uh, I wouldn't consider the VU or the VU2 uh, or the VU3 as a successful try as it was a critical failure. Uh, however, I would consider the LG G Pro as the first true success uh, for LG trying to make a, a phablet and it is a fantastic device all around. I have been using this phone for about a month and a half and uh, I've been using it as my daily driver that includes texting, browsing, gaming, everything I do with my daily driver. Um, I did get a, enough uh, impressions about it to, to make this review and tell you what I think about it. Uh, so. Let me tell you the specs, what this phone does have. It does have a 5.5 inch uh, display, full HD, IPS plus uh, display. Uh, this panel is made by LG, so you know it's going to be absolutely gorgeous. Uh, more on that later. Uh, it does have a front-facing camera of a 2.1 megapixel, uh, capable of capturing 1080p videos at 30 frames per second. Of course, there's a proximity sensor here and ambient light sensor. Uh, on the back, you do find a 13 megapixel camera, capable of also capturing 1080p at 30 frames per second uh, videos, uh, as well as a flash and uh, a speaker on the back. Uh, you do have, underneath the hood, you do have a 3140 mAh battery. Um, you're going to find expandable storage of up to 64 gigabytes, so that is definitely a plus. Most phones these days are departing from the uh, external storage and just having internal storage, so this is definitely a negative. So this one have a 64 gigabyte of expandable memory. Uh, this is the E988 model, so it does have 4G LTE as well as wireless charging. Uh, so definitely uh, that's a plus. Uh, although there's an, uh, an F240 model uh, that does not come with a Snapdragon 600. Uh, of course I did uh, forget to mention that this does have a Snapdragon 600 um, chipset. This is one of the earliest models. Actually it's one of the first phones that ever came out with the Snapdragon 600 uh, chipset. So it is uh, a little bit underclocked from the competition like the Galaxy S4 and the HTC One. Uh, it offers a 1.7 gigahertz quad core processor uh, and of course with the usual suspects you do have an adreno 320 and two gigs of ram ddr2 uh, so it is definitely not a slouch in terms of performance it's a very capable device but it is one of the earliest models uh, in typical lg fashion they just like to put the latest chipsets uh, and be the first one to put that chipset in there so uh, there's the F240 model. It does have an S4 Pro. So uh, do put that in mind when you're buying the LG. If you're really buying this phone just for the Snapdragon 600 uh, chipset, you might be disappointed by not finding it in there. Uh, and that is it for the specs. Um, the screen is 1080p display. Uh, so very beautiful, very crispy. Uh, let me show that screen for you. Uh, it's this video is not going to do it any justice. You really need to go out there on uh, your local mobile store and just try, get a hands-on of this device because it is absolutely gorgeous. Um, I, I got to be honest, after using the screen for quite a while, any other Full HD display like the Galaxy S4, the HTC One, had a very hard time to impress me. It was a very impressive screen, very good to look at. And there were times where I just, you know, um, just got the phone out of my pocket and... And and just um, just looked at the uh, looked at the display. You know, it was so crispy, so detailed, really accurate uh, colors, uh, really nice presentation of colors, very sharp, very detailed. Uh, I do need to show you uh, a little something about the body uh, design of the phone. Uh, as you see, it's most of it is plastic. It's um, pure on plastic. Uh, there's nothing special about it. And the phone, as you would see from the looks, it's a little bit inspired by the Galaxy Note. Uh, two to be quite specific, but LG did depart a little bit from that design and gave us this uh, beautiful Nexus 4 esque back panel. Uh, you know where the where the pixels kind of tilt when you're uh, there. You go when the pixels kind of tilt when you're uh, emitting light on it. It's it just it looks beautiful, very nice touch. However, this 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 beautiness of the back panel is just ruined by the smudginess of the back panel. It's very very smudgy. It is. One of the smudgiest back panels I have ever seen. Uh, sometimes I needed an, a wet towel uh, to get the smudges off the back panel. It is 
so smudgy it, it just it bothers me it's it's you really need to replace it by a different type of back panel if there is one or um, have a cover on it because this is going to be a complete mess when you're using it uh, also the as you see the screen is very ref reflective yes the ips display have probably one of the best sunlight sunlight legibility i've ever seen excellent viewing angles but uh, i've even you know i've even been able to see uh the display quite clearly uh, in full broad daylight with my sunglasses on never had a problem never had to to to, to flinch my eyes or anything uh it was just very easy to see but it's very reflective it's almost a mirror super clear um reflection there so you might have a hard time if the sun is reflecting on it uh, other than that there are some very unique design choices as the home button lights up as an led light uh led light just surrounds the home button really nice touch there i'm going to show you uh how this uh, led button works just beautiful um very excellent design choice by LG. Also on the side you do find the Q slide button. Uh, this button is a fully customizable button so it's kind of like a function button that allows you to um, have a camera app or or a Facebook or contacts or whatever you want. Any kind of app that you would want for this button to work on uh, you could just assign it to and it would work very easily. Now I have assigned this button to the camera and uh, it just works absolutely fantastic. And if you uh, clicked it a second time, uh, when you're in the camera app, it will take the photo. So that is absolutely fantastic. Also on the left side, you do find a volume rocker. On the right side, you do find a home button. Uh, on the top, you do find a 3.5 millimeter jack and an IR blaster, which is fantastic. This is kind of like a uni uh, universal remote. It just works with pretty much anything. And setting, uh, setting it up, have never been easier. It is so easy to set this application. Uh, every TV I had, uh, every air conditioner, every projector, everything just worked really well. Of course, don't expect it to work with uh, the very, very dirt cheap Chinese manufacturers uh, because it just doesn't exist. The very unknown one, the fake, uh, the cheap knockoffs, you're not going to find those trademarks, but it's never been easier to set it up. It's an excellent um, IR blaster. You do find the uh, noise cancellation mic, which does work exceptionally well. Uh, on the bottom, you do find uh, the standard microphone and the USB uh, port. Uh, this is uh, on the go and uh, USB host. It does have uh, both of these supports. It was at first a USB host, but there's an update that came and allow you to have OTG as well. And uh, I do like some of the additions on the body of the phone. Uh, I do like the, the, uh, the metal trimming around the... Uh, center of the phone. It does add a little bit of a premium feel to the phone. And that's it. The phone does look really nice. It, it fits the hand nicely. Uh, I don't have, you know, big hands, uh, you know, but it does fit really uh, nice. I could get, you know, there's a, there's a really nice, not a lot of, you know, uh, traveling distance uh, from one side to the other. Uh, it just it feels nice in the hand. It, uh, it's a little bit slippery at times. And trying to operate the entire phone with uh, one hand is a little bit difficult. It's a little bit challenging, uh, but LG did have an abs absolutely excellent ergonomics on the phone. Uh, it's not big and it's not bulky. Even though it's a tablet with a 5.5 inch display, it, it LG did a fantastic job. It, the phone is quite manageable. It's one of the most manageable tablets I've had out there. There are some tablets with a little bit slightly bigger screens, um, and they completely failed and they were completely unhandled. So. Let me show you what this uh, phone is all about. First of all, uh, this is the UI. It's it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, LG have done a great job uh, for the UI. Uh, as you see here, there are the Q slide apps, which is not a very unique addition, but it's very handy. Uh, for example, the calculator here. Um, there you go. It's it's kind of like a floating window, kind of like Windows. Uh, you are able to use the app and as well as uh, change the opacity. Uh, this works, uh, you could have up to two of them at any time, uh, and it just, it, it works, it really works really well. You could have a browser in the background and use this uh, to calculate anything. You could, you have calendar, you have memo, you have internet, as well as video. And internet, that's an actual video browser that's uh, floating in there, so that's super handy as well. You do have the customizable uh, 
toggles here. Very, very nice. You have the ability to edit them, uh, to arrange them, to do anything. This is a fantastic UI and LG have done a lot of great uh, stuff on this UI. It feels light, it feels very fast. Uh, you could say, you know, yeah, you have a Snapdragon 600, so anything is gonna feel fast. Uh, but yeah, but I've seen how touchy, touch with UI and it feels a little bit sluggish, a little bit heavy. It bogs down the system. This doesn't, It, it this, the UI is very fast. It's a very, very fast UI. And LG, even that, you could say like, it's a very stock UI, it's not a very stock UI. It's it's filled to the brim with features. Uh, there are uh, screen uh, lock screen transitions like this one, with even their own sound. They have their own customized sounds. Uh, you could have also transitions like this one. I mean, it's filled. I, I didn't ever even have to put a launcher in there because I just I didn't feel the need to. It was it was a great great uh, UI. I loved it, and I think it's one of my most favorite UIs so far. Uh, of course, you know there are some things that are unpleasant about this UI. For example, the aesthetics. Once you go. Uh, to the settings menu, for example, it's very unpleasing to look at. So uh, I don't enjoy that. I hope you know uh, LG spends a little bit more time on uh, making the uh, UI a little bit uh, aesthetically pleasing uh, underneath. Of course, I got to go to the camera here to show you what the camera is capable of. Uh, the camera app is is um, just a fantastic app. Uh, it does have a lot of features like uh, Intelligent Auto, which pretty much does all the background. Uh, processes to, to get the perfect picture. Just leaves everything, you leave everything for the phone, uh, for it to handle and do everything for you. Uh, the, it's gonna modify the settings, it's gonna make everything perfect just to take the perfect shot. Now, the pictures were a little bit underwhelming in uh, uh, artificial lighting or uh, low light conditions. It wasn't the most perfect picture. Uh, however, uh, in, in very well lit conditions, in daylight conditions, it was generating extremely outstanding pictures, very detailed, very crispy colors, uh, excellent representation of colors. It's going to be very satisfactory when you're having uh, those pictures uh, in daylight. But if you're having it at night, it's going to be very grainy, very noisy, mostly disappointing. Uh, the camera app also does have some pretty interesting stuff. Uh, for example, the settings, you do have the ability to uh, use live settings. That's, um, that's on the video, the video camera. You do have the ability to have live settings, which is kind of like uh, having uh, big eyes and, and being able to do something like the green screen, uh, where you have a custom background or a custom video running in the background of you. That's pretty cool, really cool camera app. It's uh, overall, it's a very, I'd say it's uh, it's a good camera. It's um, heck, you know, it's even great. It's a great camera, uh, but it does lack. Uh, something in in in, uh, in the night conditions. It's not that great. It's disappointing. I don't usually take pictures uh, in the night because of that camera, but it does f a fantastic job in the daylight conditions. Uh, the browsing performance. Everything about the phone just feels blazing fast. I've I've done multitasking. Uh, the performance is absolutely phenomenal. It's it's above the roof. Snapdragon 600 does absolutely what I need. If you're one of those tech savvies who really care about having the latest and greatest uh, greatest chipset chipsets, then go have something like the LG G2 or the uh, G Flex or any of the phones out there that have, or maybe even a Tegra 4 chipset. But this is just absolutely efficient. I've done so much multitasking, running about four or five apps at the same time. I've never felt uh, as if I needed more speed. I've never stood there one day and said, you know what, this phone is a little bit slow. It's fantastic, it's absolutely fast. Now one of the negative sides of this phone is the battery life. It's it's downright abysmal. It's not great at all. Now if the if you're using the phone moderately or, or uh, maybe even heavy usage, it's gonna last around the day. It's definitely gonna get you through the day, so uh, that's definitely a plus there. And um, every other aspect about the phone is fantastic. The, uh, the earpiece uh, there is absolutely loud, very, very loud. Never had a problem. Excellent reception. So it does its job as a phone. And the um, and let me show you there a little bit of one of the preloaded videos. So that you can listen to the loudspeaker. Of course, you know, again, you know, this video is not going to do justice for the screen, but if you did look for, at, at the screen head on, it's just brilliant. Every other screen have failed to impress me. It's just absolutely amazing. Of course, you do have this uh, live video playing here uh, to show, you know, 
as a slide chart showing you what that video is as a live preview. So that is a pretty fantastic feature. Of course, you can uh, minimize that video. Um, yeah, from here. Yeah, there you go. Again, the battery uh, doesn't last that great um, most of the day. Uh, gaming aspect, it takes about two hours exactly to uh, get the battery drained from 100% to 0%. Uh, and that's sad, you know, having all this power, having all this uh, amazing uh, hardware and not being able to use it is just a little bit sad. Now, the phone is going to get you through the day with a moderate to heavy usage. Uh, but if you're a gamer, if you do like to play games, it's not going to be able to do that much. It's going to only last for about two hours, and that's a little bit of a sad thing. But if you do want to see a game, here's Asphalt 8, for example. Here is a race. Should just have the back to buy the car there. I want to also show you the LED light on the home button because it's really one of the coolest. Uh, LED lights I've ever seen on a phone. There you go. All the effects are running maxed out uh, 60 frames per second. Most of the games though, there are some games that are poorly optimized though. And they do tend to get a little bit choppy. That's not due to the uh, lack of power uh, that this phone does have. It runs everything uh, from the latest and greatest games out there. Maximum visuals. Everything is on high. 60 frames per second. You will never uh, need any more power. Uh, there are a few games that did push it to the limit, like Anomaly 2. Um, and this phone got a, a quadrant score of 11,963, so it's not far behind the competition like the Galaxy S4 and the HTC One. So the performance is phenomenal, and uh, and the UI does absolutely a complementary job on just making the phone a far better experience. Now LG still haven't learned its lessons, and uh, and this phone has been released since April 2013, and yet we cannot find a KitKat update. Um, although the Galaxy S4 and most of the other manufacturers did get uh, a KitKat update, uh, I just wish uh, this have a KitKat update. It still is stuck to 4.1.2. And for such an amazing hardware, for such an amazing device, I do need something like KitKat to just give it that little extra push towards the absolute greatness. Uh, so the only things that I could think about that are negatives are the... Uh, lack of updates from LG, although there is an upcoming update LG did promise us. Uh, I hope they, you know, stay to their word. And uh, also the, just the, the abysmal battery. Yeah, everything else about the phone is, is a well-rounded package. It is available, it's not available here in Egypt, um, but if it is, it's going to be, it's, they do say it's going to be available soon. And if it is, it's going to be for around 4,000 pounds for, so for a phone that does have full HD display, um, IPS Plus, 5.5, it's a phablet, it, it is a big phone, it does lack the stylus, it does lack all the extra, um, all the extra features of the uh, Galaxy Note lineup, but, you know, it does have pretty much everything you do need to know, and, and, uh, and just the big display is just fun, it is fun, let me show you there the LED light, just, uh, just a quick here, quick glimpse at the LED light, um, there you go. So here's a preview of the uh, the alarm, for example. There you go. It lights up like this. Very, very beautiful. It's just it's a beautiful LED LED light. One of the best I've ever seen. Definitely a plus there. So uh, overall, this is just a big phone. It's a big, fast phone. If you do enjoy big screens, if you do enjoy the phablet factor, but 
you're not really interested into the uh, note. You, you, you more, you, you know, you think of them as, as a gimmick. Uh, maybe you should get this. It's just a big, fun display to have, a big, fun phone to have. And the IPS Plus display is definitely a plus. It's, it's one of the best. It's one of the leading displays out there. The only thing that you definitely should, uh, should put in mind when you're buying this phone is the lack of updates and the abysmal battery. It's not that good. Maybe you should buy a spare battery or have one of those power packs with you. But overall, I would say that this phone is absolutely outstanding and I couldn't be happier, maybe a little bit happier though, if I had a better battery life. Uh, so this have been the LG G Pro review. I hope you enjoyed the video uh, and thank you for watching. I'm Asma Muhammad from Neurology Channel. See you soon.